For the uninitiated, Air Gear is a unique action-packed show with elaborate roller skate fueled gang violence and turf wars. Starring your athletic cheeky cunt MC Minami Itsuki. Youth is not quite there yet, but has great potential because don't they always? In Agito, the OP file mouth schizophrenic trap card, the show lays down a defense mode and ends its turn. And this is sarcastically titled, I DK I just ship them, when the ships practically ship themselves. Air Gear is very much a shonen anime, with all the shonen anime tropes on display. The hyper stylized action, the tiered bad guys, weaponized hobbies, the plot. Air Gear makes no secret that teen boys still trying to find themselves are very much the target audience. So I'm always surprised when BL manages to get snuck in anyway. Because when shonen anime does BL, they do not fuck around. At first, Air Gear only gave me the slightest whiff of BL. In episode 1 with Ikemen Brothers, Trap Card, and Crop Top. Come to think of it, nearly all the major players in this series are pretty boys. The men tend to be handsome, charismatic, and strong. Also nuts, but that's a given. But in a Shyamalan twist, Iki himself is introduced to the audience by getting beaten up and screamed at by chicks, then losing an air track match badly. Iki nearly dies and even gets suggestively bent into a pretzel by a muscular older man, who appears to be enjoying it. Honestly, this doesn't look or sound like he got his ass kicked here. I kind of get a sexual assault vibe. And now I'm sorry I picked this super upbeat song. Anyway, I got through the first third of this series assuming it was just a pervy sports anime, which it is, and the BL cracks I saw before began to widen. Ikki's do it a lot. I appreciate equal opportunity and nudity, but there's no reason for this. For him to be nude to the point where censorship verb is needed. And Nikki definitely doesn't need to get completely nude to take a public dump. So I thought, okay, maybe my Hulu Joe senses are giving me false positives. Then episode 10 happens. Again, why is he doing? Like, why? If you use your dick to win a roller skating fight, you're doing it wrong. Why is any of this happening right now? いちいちあんなことしねえと忘れちまうようなトリックなら<笑><笑> As soon as he switches from potty mouth Akito to dere dere Akito, Iki is totally into him. The whole episode comes out of nowhere and there's no heterosexual explanation for any of it. Akito quickly becomes obsessed with Iki, and nothing about their interactions from here on out could be considered normal. I wondered if this overt BL was just being played off for laughs, but Akito genuinely seems to like Iki, who with a few words about a frog in a well managed to heal his tortured soul. <laughs> Even in a full 10 hour anime, the so called trap manages to swoop in and steal Iki's fast kiss. The camera really lingers on them, too. But wait, there's more! Iki passes out after the match and has a suggestive dream about Simka and the BL brothers. Until he wakes up with Akito already in his bed. Angora! 
I really liked how the show just went for it, to make absolutely sure the audience knows BL has entered the chat. The already jealous Ringo is furious that she lost Iki and his first kiss to a guy. Throwing salt in the wound, a nearly nude Akito walks in hoping to share a bath with Iki. He flirts constantly and is pretty much always around. Honestly, I didn't expect the BL to be this overt, but in a show about cute boys on roller skates, I probably shouldn't have been surprised. I kept waiting for the other shoe to drop and thought maybe episode 10 was a fluke and that the show would just go back to being a traditional harem. But to my pleasant surprise, Akito becomes a mainstay and part of Iki's newly minted Kogamasadaro gang after Iki helps him get from under the thumb of his completely psychotic brother Kaito. Akito even helps Iki with battle strategy and gets him thinking bigger about the gang's role and the future in the sport. And since he has dual personalities, he gets to be supportive and Sundere. Though Iki has his awkward moments too. After switching back to Dere Dere Akito, he promptly follows Iki home and shares a bath with him. The Fujoshi, I mean Harum, I mean Iki's housemates, watch from the doorway wondering when he went over to the other side. I assume the scene was put in for the few people still unsure of Akito's gender. Afterwards, they watch the sunset on the roof, and Akito goes on and on about how happy he is and how he wishes the moment could last forever. In the most violent tsundere roundabout way possible, Akito actually helps the gang get a big break and rapidly expand their territory all on his own. The gang is skeptical at first, but Iki sees this as the blessing in disguise that it is. Next to Akito, they get to challenge some big wigs in the underground coliseum. He and he can even develop tag team moves that only they can use. In episode 25, Iki has to prove he's leader material by jumping over 30 people. He's hesitant, since one slip up could seriously hurt or kill the person he falls on, but it only takes one snarky comment from Agito and all his nervousness just falls away. He has to try the jump many times. But it's only after Agito gives him back his Kokarasumaru emblem jacket that he's able to do the jump at all and break the distance record. As with many low-key BL shows, the portrayal of women can be pretty unflattering. I mentioned all the guys were handsome or cool, but the women tend to be objects instead of characters and rarely contribute to the plot in any meaningful way. The show sets up Simka, Iki's reason for getting into the Air Trek lifestyle, and Ringo, the Kawaii Megane next door, as the frontrunners for Iki's heart. But by the halfway point, they barely have any screen time with him at all. Fan service Simka seems to like Iki, but she's also low-key using him to rise to the top of the food chain. Their teacher, Tonchan, lives in a haze of perverted delusions and honestly makes adulting look so hard. Ringo's pretty cool by the end of the series, but before then, she mainly gets jealous, glares daggers at Akito and Simka, and wonders why Iki hasn't given her the D yet. Iki's other housemates are kind of forgettable too, and his own san wants the best for him, but mainly in that overbearing tiger mom sort of way. Odingiri and Gucha's one-shot girlfriend was a cheating chubby chaser who cut through thick boys like a hot knife through butter. In the Colosseum battle arc, this chick spends half of the fight dancing in a bikini, then starts losing off-screen, and the audience completely misses it because Ringo and Simka use their precious little screen time to squabble and undermine each other. Meanwhile, the thought Onigiri was fighting loses and has an epiphany, I mean meltdown.
Akira's girlfriend has a massive chip on her shoulder about being differently abled, and even chops up her pet bird's feathers out of spite. Now the women in this show aren't terrible all the time, but it's rare that any of them gets to shine past episode 8. They just occasionally have a chance to suck a little less. As for the so-called hetero subplot, Iki and Ringo make no actual progress relationship-wise in the entire series. Even after her makeover, he's really not interested. The excuse Ringo gives for why the gap between them has never really narrowed is because Iki can only think about roller skating and gangbanging right now. They just don't have time for things like being a couple and bonding. They're like 15. Iki never seems to have time for her or the rest of the so-called harem, but he and the show have all the time in the world for Akito. Akito's subplots become an addiction the show just can't shake, and he quickly becomes the fan favorite, with more and more plot revolving around him. This was once a show known for TNA, mind you, but not only do they kinda phase out the heroines, all the girls' screen time gets nerfed. Akito even gets the waifu treatment and starts taking on the damsel in distress role despite his strength and skill. He gets saved three times in the same four episode Coliseum arc. In episode 18, Akito is having a meltdown and losing badly as his better half fails to keep him safe. Iggy busts through the floor like the Kool-Aid man to rescue him. The plot decides Akito isn't strong enough to defeat Akira or his own caged pass, so Iki on wings of light rushes into the threshold to carry him away from the big mood he fears to be in. They strike dramatic poses, high five, break out tag team moves out of nowhere. They actually defeat Akira together with a flying boot to the head. This so called harem show bends over backwards to make sure that the focus is always on Akito in every single episode instead of the whammon. Later, Akito is recovering from the tournament arc, but since he's the trap this city needs, he gets better from that broken collarbone in a single episode. The show suddenly remembers that these are teenagers and now Akito needs to wrestle up funds for a class trip that overlaps another skating match. Iki feels some type of way about it, and he makes it his personal mission to help Akito swipe his wallet back from Kaito's RV. The show even has time for Iki to take in little details about Akito's old room and the not always terrible relationship he had with his brother. Iki making sure Akito can come on this class trip is the main story, while Simka, Ion, and the 350 person army awaiting his orders is the B story. Remember when I said Akito gets waifu? Well, this gets pushed to its natural conclusion when some girls on their class trip decide to play Pretty Pretty Princess with him. He ends up in a wedding dress and he just keeps it on. When he has to defeat a clutch of bad guys later, he's still in full drag. He even keeps wearing the dress and the wings in the next episode and no one questions it. It's pretty telling that Ringo gets the high-end kimono, but Akito's the one that gets the wedding dress. BL isn't even confined to just the MC and the fan favorite. Aeon from the Coliseum arc hits on Kazuki the second he walks into the room. Him liking men and controlling time is the only backstory he's ever given. After being defeated, Aeon becomes Iki's new slavishly attentive personal assistant. Aikido's nutjob brother Kaito tries to uh, reconcile their differences and take him back. <laughs> Apparently, this is how he shows his love. Nearly all of his interactions with Akito seem sexually abusive, and Kaito comes across more like a toxic, overbearing lover than family. And because it's been a little while since Hiki's been nude in public, he gets pants during a match in episode 24. Luckily, traffic was pretty light that day. In the second OVA, Rika from the opposing squad is annoyed at how the strongest members on her team only ever seem to notice each other, and get matching back tats apparently. In lieu of a second season, Airgear got three jam-packed OVAs. It seemed like the show was shifting towards an actual hetero romance this time around, but it takes a time skip, Ringo putting rival Simka in the hospital, 
and a very cool but contrived conflict that eats up most of the first episode for her and Iki to make literally any progress. After their beefing, Iki leaves home and Ringo behind. A girl who's clearly interested in him and whose wank session he just interrupted to go find himself. Hetero subplot be damned because Iki immediately goes to live in a swanky pad with his devoted gay assistant Aeon from season 1. To put another nail in this BL coffin, there's an after credit scene in episode 1 where Aeon tries to use knockout gas on Iki so he can have his way with him. Really? This comical attempted rape is actually played off for laughs. Stay classy, anime. The second OVA keeps this energy going where the three girls still left in Iki's harem are all silently trying to figure out how to secure their future with him. Whoever comes up with the best battle strategy will have the edge. Kazuki runs in, plans in tow, and ruins their whole career. Subtlety is not this anime's strong point. Akito, powerful in his brevity, has had it up to here with these thoughts. The girls even admit to having ulterior motives solely because they're women. Because this romantic anime wasn't done shitting on my whole gender yet. At the start of the episode, Iggy had cocked up something royally off screen, and the crew lost their chance to compete in some tournament. This was his punishment. The real question is A, why is his butthole steaming? And B, how many more Iki sodomy jokes was this anime gonna make if it went on any longer? 